Hello again, and welcome back to another FMOD and Unity uh, video, I guess. It's not so much a tutorial, it's just a little bit of fun today we're having. Uh, as you can see, we're doing something very different to what we usually do. We're messing around with a Pokemon game built entirely in Unity. It's actually built by uh, someone called Color Spectrum, I think his name is. Yeah, Color Spectrum, and the idea is that you can download this project and build your own uh, fan-made Pokemon games, essentially. Uh, so what I thought we'd do is see if we can use FMOD to kind of mess around with some of the music. Uh, and see if we can do some cool stuff. For the moment, I've just set up some very basic stuff that we could probably actually do with just Unity. Uh, but yeah, maybe later on, you know, if you guys like this kind of weird take on, you know, Unity and FMOD tutorial, uh, we could do some more weird stuff with Pokemon music. Uh, but yeah, before we jump into it, for anyone who's interested in the Unity and FMOD Essentials course, it's going by a new name now, uh, it's nearly here actually. It's coming on the 23rd. I'm going to be releasing the beta version of it. Uh, and yeah, all the information you need about it is going to be on my website at Scott Game Sounds, which I'll have a link to in the description for you. And I've also got a newsletter signed up, so I'm going to be updating uh, you guys primarily through that. And I'll also be giving away a free lesson from the course if you sign up to it. Uh, so yeah, if you're, if you're interested in this or you want to learn more about it, sign up to the newsletter or drop me an email. Uh, and yeah, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And yeah, so excited. Oh, it's so close. <laughs> I can't wait to just get this out the door and hear what you guys uh, think of it. One other thing to mention before we start, uh, the channel's just hit a thousand subscribers. So that's pretty cool. Thanks very much for everyone who's been watching all these videos and showing your support. That, you know, I, I really do appreciate it. Even though I don't really, I don't usually end these videos by saying like and subscribe. Uh, I never really kind of aimed to, you know, make it on YouTube. I was just doing this for a bit of fun. Uh, but yeah, honestly, it's amazing to see so many people finding this all interesting and. Uh, you know, showing their support. So thank you so much for everyone who has. And yeah, hopefully uh, I can, well, I intend to keep these videos up and you know, keep you all happy. So yeah, just want to quickly thank you all for that. And yeah, enough of that. Let's now jump into the video. Uh, when you download this, but by the way, I don't know if I mentioned it, I'll have this linked in the description if you want to download the Unity Pokemon project. Uh, when you open it up, you'll get like a little mini kind of game level built somewhat. There's only like one battle in it, I think. Uh, but it's just again, to give you a sort of feel for it. Uh, and yeah, all I've done is basically swap the music out and made it my own. Okay, so I think it's finally time for us to play that rival battle. Uh, just give me a second to get into character. Okay, here we go. I'm a silent protagonist, just strolling around with my piplup. Let's now trigger this rival battle. Here she comes. Ow! Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Wait, my brooch is broken, you idiot! Sorry for the bad voice. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Watch where you're going. If you see someone... I can't even read it properly. If you see someone in a hurry, you move. Forget it. I'm Lady Vawain now. Someone needs to teach you a lesson. Let's go. Okay, so here we go. So from here on out, this is the music I've added. And I've got a feeling you'll recognize it. But yeah, there we go. So obviously, as you can hear right now, that is the music from the anime. Uh, I, you know, as soon as I found this project, that was the first thing that came to mind. I've got to kind of add this music in because it's my favourite music, I think, from, uh, from well, Pokemon, I guess. Uh, but that's not the only thing I've done. If I quickly wipe the floor with this imposter pit blob, show him how it's done. Come on, pit blob, get out of it. Fainted. That's it. There you go. You're all done. So yeah, that's uh, some more music from the anime I've added, and that obviously triggers or that changes whenever you win, essentially. Uh, so yeah, and that's pretty much everything. If we leave, it fades out and goes back into the normal overworld music. Uh, so yeah, let's have a look at how I went about that. Right, so uh, the only thing I'm doing in F mod really is the music for the battle, as you can see. I've only got one event set up. All the other music and sound effects, I'm letting Unity do uh, itself, and maybe if I feel like it in another video, uh, we'll go back and add some sound effects and do our own thing. Uh, but yeah, uh, so what I had to first of all do, like I said, was get a feel for how the code kind of worked in this game. Uh, most of my time was spent, to be honest, trying to figure out how the, the Pokemon Trainer uh, battle was triggered. Uh, I think if I can zoom in here, there is a little trigger box. Oh, God, somewhere. Let's see if I can find it. There we go. Found it. Right. So, as you can... Oh, God. Easy with the camera. As you can see, there's a little trigger box here. The idea is, as you walk into it, you trigger uh, the event. 
Uh, and then as you can see, there's this script up here that was created by you know the fellow who made this uh, project. Uh, it's a custom event, and the idea of this script is you can design how these events and interactions kind of go. So with this, we can kind of change what the, the rival would say to us, how they'd walk around and where they would go. Uh, and we can also use this to trigger the, um, the battle. Uh, so what I noticed when I was playing through this game is that uh, the person who designed the project actually left some debug.log uh, scripts in his code. So there was already a lot of uh, information being sent to the console as is. Uh, and when you enter the battle, you got a little notification at the bottom here saying uh, rival battle. So I was trying to figure out where that was coming from, what script was uh, calling that. Uh, but annoyingly, if I quickly go to this script attached to global, I think it's... Ah, here we go. Okay, so this is uh, a script called global variables. It's basically, I think it's attached to this game object here. Yeah, there it is. Uh, it's basically kind of like a uh, script that does most of the work for the general kind of, you know, functions of the game, I guess. Uh, and what the guy, what the person's done is they've actually created their own kind of debugging function. So any other scripts that want to debug something, they'll basically call this function here uh, and then send a message through that, which is kind of annoying because I wanted to use those little messages I was getting at the bottom to find the scripts that were, say, for example, trigger, triggering battles. But it would just always, if I double clicked on the debug command to find out where it was coming from, it always take me to this script, which doesn't really help. It doesn't tell me which script is actually calling that debug. Uh, function. Uh, so yeah, like I said, I had to kind of mess around with, once I found that trigger box, I had to mess around with the custom event script. Uh, if I go to bump event trees and go to rival encounter, let's stretch this out a bit. As you can see, there's a lot of options that we basically go through as we, um, well, encounter the rival. So for example, uh, there's things that they that move. So for example here, this event type will make the arrival uh, walk around. There's a bump sound that plays. Uh, and again, moves a bit more, moves a bit more, says something, ow. Uh, and yeah, these are basically individually triggering um, events, essentially. And if we get all the way down to 10, we can see here that the event type is trainer battle, uh, which you can select and choose from. Uh, so all we had to do really to find out when the battle was triggering is find uh, the trainer battle or find where it was being triggered in this script. So if I go to custom events, uh, where is it over here? Ah, here we go. So I believe this is where the, or this is what's executed when we select the uh, trainer battle event. Uh, now this is a enumerator, I believe, and I think an enumerator is basically, uh, it's a tool you can use in C Sharp where you create like your own kind of uh, constants that you can call from whenever you, you know, call that variable, uh, sorry, not variable, enumerator. Uh, so for example, uh, one way they're used in a Pokemon game like this, is for types of Pokemon. Like you'd have an enumerator and it would be called Pokemon type. And then you'd create all the different types and you'd give them the names of the types. So for example, you'd have fire, water, grass, and so on. And then when if you if you wanted to call one of those types in a battle or check you know what type the Pokemon is, you'd say Pokemon type and then call the specific enumerator value. So it'd be like electric. Uh, but yeah, that's generally what's going on here. I'm not too sure how they're using the enumerator, but that wasn't really important. The important thing is to know is that this is what was being called uh, whenever that the event type, or if I go back to the custom event here, whenever we got to uh, event or encounter 10 or whatever, yeah, bump, I'm not sure the right word for these, I guess event, a 10th event, either way. We wanted to find out what was being called and it was this section here. So what I did is I put my own debug.log command in it with you know capital letters in my own name. So I could easily find it in the console. Uh, and as you can see here, I've added my own piece of code for playing the music back in FMOD, which we're gonna talk about in a bit. Next thing I had to do was find out how we won. So whenever you trigger a battle, there is a script and a game object under the global game object called scene battle and it kind of transitions the game into this this activates whenever you know a battle's triggered and this script here the battle handler basically does everything you need or you'd want it to do for, to make a pokemon battle work essentially uh, so from here on out this was the script i was working with to kind of get everything else to work as you can see there's already uh, something i've added fmod music object and that was just so i could trigger some music in the other object uh, but yeah, what, now that I've found where the uh, battle was being triggered, that obviously is what I was using to then play the music. This is what I was using to then switch it to the victory music. So if I go edit, it turns out they have uh, this integer variable here called Victor. Uh, and it's nice and easy to understand. Basically, if it's set to one, you've won. If it's set to, oh, sorry, it's the other way around. If it's set to one, I think you've lost. If it's set to zero, then you've won. Uh, so obviously that would change at the end of the battle. So that was nice and easy. All we had to do was find where it changes to zero and then say, okay, change the music 
uh, if we won, which is what I've done. And again, I had to write my own debug.log con- command just so I could, you know, find it whenever it appeared in the game and make sure it was working. Last thing to do is to tell our music to stop when the battle is over. The way I found this was actually kind of lucky. <laughs> uh, I just noticed, I just recognized these uh, strings that was being uh, displayed in the game. So for example, you received X amount of dollars for winning, uh, defeated. So I was like, okay, this is what's being called when the game's uh, ended. Uh, so basically, once this is all finished, you know, displaying all that text, we know that the match is going to be over. So again, I added my little debug.log command just to test it, and I added my own little uh, function, which I'll talk about in a second. Okay, so both of those scripts were basically calling upon this game object here, which I've called fmod, and all I've done is made a script called fmod underscore music, and this is what's controlling all my music, essentially. Uh, nice and easy to understand, create an event instance uh, at the top of the class, in the awake function, uh, we're basically attaching my uh, event I created to that event instance. I've called it battle music, by the way. Then I made my own function, which I call in, uh, I think that was in the custom event script. Yeah, play battle music. So that was when we recognized that we were entering a battle. I would tell the, uh, where is it? The Not this one, custom event script uh, to play the play battle music uh, script. Sorry, not script, function from the uh, fmod music script. And if I scroll to the top of this script, you can see here I've created two private variables. Uh, one, they're re both reference variables. One's to find the game object that, uh, well, this game object here, fmod. And the other is to find the script that's attached to it. So that's this script here, fmod underscore music. Uh, and then I believe in the awake function, I just said, find that game object called fmod and assign it to the fmod underscore music underscore object variable. Uh, and do that once you've done that, you can get the component uh, fmod underscore music and attach it to that game object. I didn't make it very clear, as you can see. I'm, <laughs> I don't know why I've meant given my variables such long names, but there you go, it works either way. So once it's found that game object and that script attached to it, uh, we can basically use that to play uh, music from any other script that needs to, essentially. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, once that was done, uh, next thing was to change the battle when we've won. Uh, so actually, I think it's about time we jump into the FMON side of things and have a look what I've done. So ignoring this parameter here, because that was something I was experimenting with and didn't work, uh, this parameter here is basically deciding when we've won, and once if we have won, it will switch uh, from this track here to this track here. The first track is obviously the uh, battle, burning battle music, uh, it just plays, in fact, if I zoom in a bit, because you can't really see it very well, it just plays uh, its little intro, and then once it gets past the intro, it will just loop seamlessly over and over again whilst you're still in the battle. Then if this parameter goes from 0 to 1, and it will do so, I think I, yeah, I changed the seek speed, so it doesn't do it straight away, it kind of slowly goes over. Uh, but if it goes over 0 0.25, and, uh, well, basically hits 1, it will then transition uh, the cursor from this track all the way over to marker A and then start the wind music. And again, that's got a bit of an intro and then loops seamlessly until the event's told to stop. So yeah, really nice and simple on the FMOD side. I think I also uh, automated the volume, as you can see. So when the uh, battle one parameter slowly goes over to one, it will fade out the battle music uh, nice and even, evenly for us. So the battle one function, as I said earlier, I think I did that in the battle handler script. Uh, oh, I'm gonna have to find it first, I've lost it. <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. So as you can see, again, I'm calling the fm variable that's storing an instance of the fmod game object and by extension, the fmod underscore music script, and then telling it to change the parameter, or sorry, call this uh, function battle one uh, in that script, which is here, battle one. And then that, function is basically saying, okay, set the parameter value of the battle one parameter in fmod to one, nice and easy. And then last is this function here, stop battle music, uh, it just basically tells that event instance to stop and allows it to fade out. And then again, like I said, if I scroll down here, when the match is over, again, I'll just call that function. So all it is, is using, utilizing these scripts that have already got systems in place for triggering, you know, the battle, triggering when the player's won and executing the battle. It's just using them to call functions from another script that in turn will trigger our fmod uh, project. So yeah, really easy to do. But yeah, that's everything really. Uh, yeah, let me know if you have any ideas for this because yeah, I definitely want to do some more stuff. I haven't made it clear already. I'm a bit of a, a bit of a Pokemon fanatic, you might say. <laughs> I've been playing these games since 
you know, day one I was on this earth. So please, I'd, I'd love to know if you guys are interested in this. And like I said at the beginning of the video, let me know if you have any questions about the FMOD and Unity Essentials course. Uh, on my website, which again will be linked in the description, uh, there's loads of details for you to find out more about it and see if this is up your alley and something you're interested in. Uh, and yeah, keep an eye out. The 23rd is when I plan on releasing the beta for it. Thanks very much for watching as always, guys. Uh, the added game sounds is not gone, by the way, that series. We're still doing that. Uh, but I just thought we'd take a little break because we've done like seven episodes in a row. And yeah, that's everything I've got to say for today. Uh, I will see you in the next one.